Hey y'all, it's Laura, and I have my second grab bag challenge. This one is Studio Calico's tween grab bag. So let's take a look and see what we've got. Okay. So unlike the Easter grab bag, which did not have any embellishments at all, this looks to be a lot better in that respect. There seems to be a lot of embellishments in this one. However, it doesn't seem to have very many papers. Um, starting with the pa let's start with the papers because there aren't very many. This beautiful pink with the stars, gold foil stars, but it's one-sided. So, two papers, one-sided. Um, it would be difficult for me to get much out of this kit, so I am going to um, cheat a little bit and allow myself a piece of white cardstock to add to the scrap bag, just so that I can get at least two layouts out of the scrap bag. There is a lot of uh, embellishments, so that is the papers I'm going to be using. Now on to the fun stuff. There is. Um, one piece of paper in here that I'm not quite sure how to use. It's a to-do list of sorts and it has things like ride bikes downtown, start a journal together, dance off, give a gift, make a scrapbook. Um, not really sure what I'm supposed to do with this. I'll be honest, I'll probably use it for photo layering with the back because it's interesting. And we also have some beautiful alphas from A Beautiful Mess. And these are very usable. I like the colors, especially this pink works really well with that paper. So these are very usable. All right, what else have we got? Uh, I also see that there are no like pocket cards. So while there's a lot of embellishments in here, there was just the two pieces of paper and no pocket cards. So, I think I'm going to reach into the documenter kit that I got, the big giant one, and grab just a pack of cards. There we go. And I'll just add a pack of cards to this grab bag. It's probably not related to tween, but it will allow me to do a pocket page kit, or pocket page layout, as well as a regular layout and um, let's see what's in here. Actually, I don't know. <laughs> oh, these don't come out very easily, apparently. There we go. Oh, these are wedding themed. That should be interesting. <laughs> Tween grab bag wedding themed cards. So we've got put a ring on it and these are one sided but they're very thick. I do. Oh, this is a nice one. This is kind of tween. Kind of a doodly flower. Mr. and Mrs. Champagne journaling card. Best day ever. That could be very tween. The colors look really good with some of these. So I'm, I'm happy with this. Love. Whatever our souls are made of, his and mine are the same. Oh, love Emily Bronte. Our story. Very usable. Wedding checklist. Not going to use that. First dance. Okay. This is good. I like that. Maid of honor, best man, etc. I choose you. Is anyone else going, I choose you, Pikachu? No? Okay, just me. Um, more hearts. Dance party. Another journaling card. Wedding songs. This is an ampersand. That's pretty. It's a, a nice corally color that might work with some of these kind of a teal elements. Details, yeah, I'm really, this was a good choice out of that grab bag because the colors look pretty nice with these stickers. So that's good. Okay, more doodly hearts. You have my whole heart for my whole life. I love that. Honeymoon, uh, some kissing birds, another journaling card, happily ever after and a blank one. All right. 
So we're gonna add those. Those came from my documenter kit from Studio Calico. So I feel okay with uh, sticking those in with this grab bag just to extend it a little bit. Perhaps adding this in, I could get three layouts. Hmm, there's definitely enough embellishment to do three layouts. So I'm gonna try to get three layouts with the addition of these cards. They won't all get used. I'll just grab a few out. Then we've got these lovely uh, cardstock stickers. Got some arrows, hearts and stars, and more arrows. These are circle cardstock stickers. Got numbers 1 through 12. I assume that's from the months of the year for Project Life. And some icons. These are pretty. These are some pink vellum tiny, tiny letter stickers. Tiny alphas. So those are very usable, though the vellum might be tricky. I'll have to back it, I think, or put it onto a white card or something so it'll show up. Okay, we got a couple of stamps. I've got this one, which is from One Little Bird and Studio Calico, and it is a cell phone with some emojis, and kind of you could make your own little text message conversation on the cell phone. That's kind of cute but can I use it? Hmm, we'll see. We'll see if I get to use that. Here's another stamp. This one's much more usable, I can already tell. This is from A Beautiful Mess, and it has everything is blank, and then you can write in some journaling. Let's get blank. Numbers, all of the numbers. Hello, mega heart eyes, some arrows, some more arrows, a cluster of arrows. This is much more usable, I'll definitely use this one. We've got some tiny little tickets. They appear to be acetate tickets. I'm not excited about the tickets, gotta be honest. <laughs> We've got a little three by four transparency with the ampersand on it. Let's see if we can use that. Uh, oh, we did get some cards. No, these are tags, I see. No cards, just tags. So we've got a peace sign. My daughter loves to do that. Um, she is a tween, actually. So maybe I'll scrapbook one of her pictures. We've got a nice journaling tag, one day at a time, and some polka dots. These are all one-sided, but they're very nice, very usable. Okay, and now we have a tiny, tiny little glassine bag that I am trying not to rip because it's so cute. I do use glassine bags quite frequently. Uh, as layering pieces or in my project life. These are just some kind of holographic silver circles, so that's something. Uh, we've got, looks like acrylic stars. Okay, that could be interesting. I don't expect to use all of these things in my layouts, but the idea is to use as many as possible to create as many layouts as I can. Okay, this is a uh, embroidered patch. I don't think I've ever used a patch on a layout before. I have used an embroidered flower, but this is like a Happy Mail kind of patch. So that would be interesting. I'm not sure I'll be able to use that, but we'll try. We've got a, a rather nice pink pen, and the inclusion of the pens was something I didn't expect. Uh, it's very sparkly. Um, nope, it's a turning one. So that's that's interesting. It's pretty. Then we have some uh, heavy body paint from Color Theory. Let's see what the color is here. It's yellow, but uh, what is it called? It is called Sunny Day. Yep, that sounds appropriate. So some sort of neon yellow paint. <laughs> we'll see what I can do with it this time. We've got some uh, washi and kind of a rainbow stripe on this little dispenser. Got a bright neon pink washi polka dots. Oh, goodness. They didn't want this one to escape, quite obviously. Okay, there we go. 
So a nice bright pink washi, which should look nice. If I use those uh, pink papers for layering, this might be a nice uh, tie-in with that pink as well. Then we have, um, feels like rubber, maybe? Stars? Let me pull those out here. We've got three different colors. Looks like some large pink, some medium-sized kind of peach, and some small orange ones. So that could be cool. These are pretty flat. I think I could work these into a pocket page. Alrighty, and then we have some buttons. Are buttons a thing anymore? It doesn't seem like anybody uses buttons. I know they were very popular for a while, and my daughter loves to use buttons in her scrapbooking. Um, I used to have a bunch of them, but they don't seem to be a, a popular choice anymore. So lots of buttons, so we'll give those a go, see what we can make with that. We have um, some kind of a sticker. It's a silver sticker. Studio Calico really, really needs to label their products um, with what it is because some of them are kind of hard to tell. Oh, it's a scratch off. That's interesting. Why would I use a scratch off sticker on my scrapbooking? Or even a pocket page. That's interesting. Um, maybe a card? I don't know guys. I don't know if I can use this one, but we'll see. I've got some faux stamps stickers. Okay, and then we have this lovely silk screen. And it's from A Beautiful Mess, and I don't know how to use a silk screen. So... We'll see how that goes. We might have to do a little experimentation. That should be fun. Alright guys, so that's it. We've got a mess. <laughs> now that I've unboxed everything. Uh, so, we'll be starting the process video now. Hey y'all, it's Laura. And I have the fun little process video that accompanies this grab bag. And uh, this is my daughter, Olivia. And she is four years old in this picture. It's a pretty recent picture. And uh, a couple of pictures there. She uh, doesn't usually want to take pictures, but if I turn the screen on my phone around so she can see herself, I can often get some of the sweetest pictures of her. And uh, these, these are a couple of those. They're not great quality because they are from that front forward facing camera, but uh, I love them. She's just so sweet. And she's wearing that gorgeous yellow uh, shirt, so I thought this would be a perfect picture to use this neon yellow paint that came in the kit. And uh, just going to play with that a little bit on the silk screen. was really excited to try out the silk screen. And I had to Google it, though, how to use it. And this is what was recommended, using a credit card or a, a spatula of some kind. And look how clean that came out. Oh, so excited. Oh my goodness, that is my art journal that I'm using as a palette there. Um, I do that sometimes, not always, but sometimes. And uh, then I decided, you know what, I've got the paint out, I've got my art journal out, let's just go ahead and paint some of this cardstock yellow. And I can use it to uh, mat the larger photo, which has a little bit more of that yellow in it. And uh, yeah, I mean, it, it came out really sweet, I think, but really bright. <laughs> I love bold colors, but neon is not really what I consider a bold color. It's just very, very bright. And uh, it was it was a lot. This page, I tried to tone it down with a little bit of black, and I think that helped. But overall, this page is very, very bright at the end. <laughs> So this is dry now. I've let it dry for several hours and I'm going to just cut this up into strips to mat my photo. I do this quite often with papers that I don't have a lot of left and I really want to use. I'll cut it up into strips and then uh, just arrange it around the outside of my photo so it looks like it's a full piece of paper, but it's not. 
So that's a nice little uh, trick to try if you haven't done that before. And I'm going to use the rest of this paper as a mat for these two photos. And this one I'm putting directly onto the white paper. And the next one I'm going to use that bright neon pink washi because if you're going to do neon page you might as well go all in, right? So cutting that out and then I'm going to mount it on the yellow washi. Now I do know that on mixed media layouts, well mixed media in general, it's a little bit more difficult to adhere to a painted surface. So I decided to use my tacky glue in the fine line bottle instead of my Elmer's tape runner because I knew the, the, the wet glue works better. And it did, it adhered a lot better. So just going to take forever, apparently, to trim this up. Um, yeah, I'm a very slow scrapbooker. Do you scrapbook quick or do you are you like me and you're very, very particular about how each piece comes together? Uh, my my creative side is is very particular, which is funny because in the rest of my life, I'm not. I'm not super particular about most things. Food, yes, I am very particular about food. <laughs> I'm rather picky. But uh, in most things though, I'm not super particular about how things are done or how something looks or or whatever. whatever. I mean, not really. But um, when it comes to my creative stuff though, I want something to look a certain way. And I, I, it makes me a very slow scrapbooker. And so I have to speed up my videos quite a bit. So for this photo, I felt like it was getting lost in that sea of white because, um, well, there's a lot of white in the background of these photos. They were taken in front of a window. Uh, we were just sitting together and uh, playing with my phone and uh, the window behind us was creating pretty interesting light. And it's just going to verify this will fit. Yeah. And then uh, putting down some of this neon pink washi. This is one of those things that I love to use washi for. I love to put it down on cardstock and then cut it out as a frame or uh, punch out embellishments from it. Washi is just so... <sighs> I just lost my word. But it's, it's very usable. It is uh, flexible. It's durable. It, oh, it just works. You can use it for so many things. You can use it for... Uh, a hinge on a little pop out. You can use it uh, just for everything. <laughs> uh, as my husband likes to tease, like it's tape, but yes, it's fancy tape. It's pretty tape, and it's tape that seems to uh, to handle more in the crafty world than uh, most tape does. Now here's the point at which I think as I was sitting here going, hmm, I really wish I'd moved that hey you all the way over to the left side of the page because it would have given me just a hair more space. Now these <laughs> these alphabet stickers had the A Beautiful Mess, which is a brand name, uh, at the top and I thought what better way to describe my sassy little girl than A Beautiful Mess because she is. <laughs> So I cut that out and my initial thought was to use the black just as a strip underneath of the photos. But then I got to looking at it and decided, nope, I want that beautiful mess piece to show because it's kind of appropriate for her. She's a very active little girl. Uh, she does have nonverbal autism, so she doesn't say a whole lot. She has a few words, but not, not a ton. And uh, she... She has her own way of communicating, that's for sure. She does her own thing and lets you know what she needs. So I'm just gonna keep trimming this down, trying to find a good size and placement because I didn't really want those photos up at the very top of the page. I really wanted to be able to tie in any of the elements that I added underneath of this black strip, again, up at the top. Because otherwise, it's just going to feel like a lot of really separate elements on the page and not a cohesive, this was intended, this is a design choice. <laughs> Instead of just, I just put this here. <laughs> huh. Although I have seen layouts that are like that, that I really like. But for most, most of the time, it's a design choice on my part. But... Look at this. I love washi. Look at that. It just pulls right back up. 
what other tape can you just pull back up over and over and over again and reposition and then it stays? Love it. So I'm going to move these around a lot. That's going to get changed again in a minute because, uh, you know, you're fussing. It's fussy. They would call that fussy cutting for a reason, don't they? But yep, I'm going to glue it down and then I'm going to end up pulling it right back up and cutting it down some more because I just didn't like how crowded the hay U was. Um, yeah, see, it's, <laughs> I'm touching it. It's bothering me. <laughs> oh, goodness. Yes, being very particular on this layout. I think those bright colors just had me a bit befuddled because they're not something I normally use. And I'm like, is this too much? Is this, <laughs> should I do more? Do you just go all in with the bright colors? <laughs> I'm not sure. So I'm just going to fuss around with that for a little bit and uh, then position my photos on top of the black line. I will say that I wish I hadn't used the glue all over the back of this photo. I'm not really sure why I did that, actually. Um, there's no mixed media on the page uh, or on the back of the photo, and it ended up making the photo a little bit lumpy, which I should have recognized, but I think I thought that um, to-do list that I used to mat the photo was pretty thick cardstock, and I think I thought it would be fine. And it was, it was okay, it was just a little lumpy. So then I decided to pull out one of the stamps and use it to make a little word sticker kind of thing. And I put that in the top right of the big photo. Now I did use a big and a small photo, and the reason I like to do that is because uh, I just think it gives some visual interest to the page. I'm hoping to create a diagonal flow to the page, that way your eye moves through the page, and sometimes that's planned, and sometimes it's just me. <laughs> now, I do find that I normally go the other direction, but um, yeah, I like this going from top right to bottom left. I just find that I more often go the other way. So this says Mega Heart Eyes, which I thought was appropriate since we were taking selfies. <laughs> But uh, she's she's so sweet. Love, love, love her sweet personality. So we're going to, uh, yeah, just stick that up in the top corner eventually. Hmm, what am I doing? Oh, glue dots. That's interesting. I usually use my tape runner for that. Oh, there's the tape runner. Hmm, not sure why. I, oh, I know why. I was going to put it... Uh, offset from that photo and the photo was lifted a little bit because it had a mat behind it and I was trying to offset that but then I didn't end up putting it there so, <laughs> so it's fine so these postage stamps I end up punching out some shapes to grab those colors I really liked the colors on a lot of the stickers but the shapes were a little bit more difficult to use this is the other washi that came in the kit and I recognized that it would uh, allow me to bring in more color. I mean, allow, I could just add more color, but I felt like it would feel really random to throw in a bunch of blue on top of this yellow and pink. Uh, so I thought this rainbow washi would kind of incorporate that blue a little bit better. And uh, yeah, and then I'm just gonna grab some of these stamps and punch them now. <laughs> Lesson learned. Pulled off a stamp to use it there and then really, really didn't like the way it looked. So I end up pulling it back off and putting it through one of my punches. And of course, because it's adhesive, it got stuck in my punch. And uh, oh yeah, that was fun. Put that little star there and then accidentally knocked it off the table. So of course, instead of picking it up right away, I'm like, huh, we'll deal with that later. <laughs> <laughs> and grab some stars off of the alpha sheet. There we go. This star, I was very intelligent and punched that one while it was still attached. So that one was fine. But then I pulled the other postage stamp off and uh, tried to punch it. And it worked. Don't get me wrong. See, got that star out of it. But I cut out the part where I struggled with it because <laughs> it got stuck in my punch for about five minutes. But yeah, it just added a little bit of blue. I think that was a good... Uh, a good way to, to attempt to tone down that yellow and the pink and I really like that punch of black with the big strip on there 
And that really, that just came from the top of the alphas. I mean, it was just a packaging, and I use packaging a lot, um, but I thought I'd put a couple of strips of that washi up at the top just to tie in uh, those colors up there as well. And again, creating that diagonal flow to the page. Now I'm gonna cut into here so I can grab a star from this stamp. There we go, which is just another shade of blue, I believe. Yep, decided to move that dark blue up there. Here we go, I had to add more adhesive <laughs> because that was the one I stamped. And I did add uh, that Hey You, I put a, um, a blue uh, punctuation at the end there instead of the yellow from the silk screen. Just to, again, try to incorporate that Hey You in with the layout. And decided that this black and pink and rainbow washi at the end here needed some kind of a boundary. Of course I did. <laughs> <laughs> it needed a boundary, so I put a little strip of yellow that uh, kind of felt like the washi was coming out from that. And I think this is just about done. Let's see, I'm looking at it. I'm checking. Is there anything else I want to add to this? Hmm, looking at my supplies, thinking about it. Yep, I decided to add some journaling. Grab that fancy pen that was in my kit and grab bag rather and uh, go ahead and do some journaling around the outside of the pictures and I actually really like how this came out I don't do this very often at all in my scrapbooking I do it quite frequently in art journaling but in scrapbooking not so much and uh, I really think that it helped this layout feel finished because I don't have a lot of tiny embellishments to kind of make it feel finished um, you know, I said at the beginning of this video that this uh, grab bag had a lot of embellishments, and it did, but they were very flat. They were all flat stickers, and so trying to create a little bit of dimension was a bit of a challenge. So mostly what I'm just writing here is that she's such a sweet girl and that I so enjoy her smile. And now it's almost done. Oh my goodness. No, I added a little bit of black to the bottom with just a tiny strip of, uh, of that, and then I'm going to grab this blue sticker and move it down here just to make it go from uh, edge of page to edge of page on each side. And now it's done. Thanks for watching, guys. Okay, y'all, here is the results of my tween grab bag from Studio Calico. As you can see, I've used up majority of the papers. There's, uh, there were two pieces of this sparkly neon pink and I just have some scraps here that I'll punch up for my embellishment tray. And I've got, uh, there were three of these acrylic stars. I was able to use one. There were uh, six of these rubber stars and I used two of those. Hmm, there's another one around here somewhere. Um, here he is. So I was able to use the two light pink ones. Uh, there was a whole mess of buttons, and you'll see I used quite a few buttons, actually. Uh, so that's what's left of those. And what else? I obviously did not use this little embroidered patch. I'm going to stick that into a rack for somebody else to use. These um, scratch-off stickers I probably will just pass on as well. Not a fan. Didn't use them. Um, these holographic stickers, I really was doing a lot of gold based layouts and so these were more silvery and didn't get used, but they will get used, I can add them to my stash. These stamp ones, I actually punched several of them, used one whole one, but punched a couple of others to add as embellishments. I didn't use any of these tags as they are, but I did take one of the tags and put it on a, uh, one of those lovely 4x4 cards that I added in. These are my little add-on to the kit. These actually came from Studio Calico as well. We're in the big documenter box. So I figured that was a fair add-in because there wasn't much paper. And I just used this as a template uh, on one of the cards that had words on it. It had some really pretty gold words on it. So I do have these tags to use later. They will absolutely get used. I am a huge fan of tags. Again, these are the 4x4 cards, not too many left, probably used about half of them, I think. 
so that was good. I used two of these stickers here. These ones, to be honest, will be difficult for me to use. I'll probably use this top two rows, but I don't imagine I'll end up using these bottom ones. And these are the vellum alphas. I used a pretty good chunk of those. Several of these stickers here, mostly the hearts and stars, not surprising. Um, there's another button. This silk screen got used. I figured it out. You saw me using it on the process video, as a matter of fact. Also used the yellow paint with this. I used both of the washi on the process video that you saw, so that got used. I did use this pen for some of my journaling, and both of the stamps got used. The hello, the mega heart eyes, lol, uh, hey there, and one of the emoji faces got used. And last but not least, the sticker sheet. I did pull off several of these pretty, kind of a mint teal ones, and punched out a uh, an embellishment from those, but I did also use a title with these as well, and I was excited about that. So on to the layouts. I made four layouts, which I think was pretty good. Um, Mostly because I had so much uh, with the pocket cards that I pushed myself to do two pocket pages. So that's why there's four. So here we have the uh, the first one that you saw a process video for, Hey You. Here's that mega hard eye stamp. Uh, just lots of stickers on here, so both of the washi. Lots of fun. This one's a little bit brighter than I am usual usually do, but for Olivia, I think it's perfect. I think that if she could tell me she liked something, she would like this quite a bit. It's very wild and bright colors, and that's very much her uh, personality, honestly. <laughs> Here's that silk screen right there. On the second layout, I did this one and used that beautiful paper almost in a whole piece. I cut down the sides and uh, just used some scrap piece of white paper. You know what you pull out of your albums to put your layouts in? Grab that as a backer. Uh, a couple of things out of my kit for this one. I did grab half a doily. Just thought it needed a little something. I used those tickets. I turned them backwards and then just added them as a layering piece on this doily. Uh, this was the uh, scalloped circle that I cut out with these from these stickers mounted onto a piece of uh, scrap card stock. Use this for a title, hugs, uh, some more stickers. This was the tag that I used the uh, other tags as a template to make. And grab some of this little blue ribbon from my stash because I don't like using a tag without something in the hole. Um, got a sticker on top of one of the rubber stars. I really like that. And a couple of buttons up here. So I thought that was pretty good. The uh, two pocket pages are both wedding layouts, which makes sense because that's the theme of the uh, that the 4x4 cards were. This first one, uh, the only thing that I pulled from my stash on this layout was uh, the, th the thickers for the title. And I did that because I felt like... <sighs> The pink was a lot. There was a lot. This pink is very intense and it needed something to be equally intense to balance it. That's what I'm trying to say, to balance it out. So I went with black and really like how that came out. So beyond the thickers, everything else came from the uh, grab bag and did some flags, used one of the acrylic stars here, which was hard to use. Those suckers are thick. They are really thick. It's on the outside of the pocket protector. And here's some of those tiny alphas there at the bottom and here as well. And here is the stamp with the emoji that says, hey there. All right. On the other side, another wedding layout. And this used a lot of the pocket cards because at this point I am really low on the pink paper. And the pink paper didn't really go well with this one. Uh, in these pictures I'm wearing very bright pink so I think it worked. But on this side, it would, would have been too much. So I just used the pocket cards and uh, some scrap pieces of the pink paper. The back of it was white, so I did use some of those. This is the LOL uh, stamp. We've got the little alphas here, 
couple of stickers, another uh, rubber star and a button and uh, some more stickers. So that's it for this uh, grab bag challenge. Let me know in the comments what you think and as always I appreciate any thumbs up. Bye!